the people on the grid. James, who's the founder of Coworkation, on location. Yeah, <laughs> on site. On site. Place. I like to say it, on location. Coworkation on location, there we go. I yeah. don't like it actually, yeah. So it's got a nice ring to it. And, um, you know, we've been experiencing the last couple of days, uh, you know, actually probably one of the first Coworkations that mm. you put into practice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what what is it, how is it you, Stuart, combine, you know, your lifestyle with work and how important mm. is it? Yeah, I think... Uh, extremely important and I've really tried to integrate the two uh, and have been doing for years. You know, I started off backpacking around the world and then found a way to make money um, sort of in San Sebastian. Uh, what, were and, you do, what were you doing in San uh, Rented out an apartment, made it in, turned it into like a backpacking sort of a, a pension, hostel, uh, and then started doing some, some parties and pub crawls and surfing safaris along the French and Spanish coast. Um, and then it became a little bit more serious, but I was doing things because I really wanted to, I guess. Mm. Um, I enjoyed them, and, and this is well, what I want to do as a traveller, like experiences that I want to do. So, well, I want to do a Spanish cooking class. Okay, well, let's make a really good, fun Spanish cooking class. You know, like, so things, because I was, I was one of them, like, you know, like, I was my target market, like, so I sort of thought, well, if I sort of want to do these things, I think they probably will as well. And so we set up uh, different products, um, and um, they kind of worked. Uh, and then from there, like, I really, I guess, I used to get out maps and plot around where do I want to go and what, okay, this year, next year, three years' time, I wanted to, I wanted to get out there and explore the world, but I wanted to be working and, uh, at the same time, and, yeah. I, you know, I needed to work at the same time. Okay, and, so, and you know, you sort of, do you, what are the sort of challenges you might face? If you, let's say, for example, you went to Brazil mm -hmm. and you set up a business there. Yeah. You know, what are the kind of challenges you come across? Oh, uh, look, um, I think any time you go off and do something in a totally different country, like, um, you know, coming over to Spain or like doing things in Brazil, you always need like different um, partners. Like, so in Brazil, we've got, uh, got a, a partner that's on the ground there. Um, I've loosened my ties with that um, business now. It's only a small operation. Um, but it's more challenging when you're in a different location to then be able to set it up and understand the way the systems work, the legalities, and have contacts and these kind of things. So I think, you know, that's why co-working spaces are so, uh, you know, valuable to people. You, you, you've got that. You know, there's this melting pot of all these different people doing different things. So, you know, you need some help, advice, or resources, then it's not too far away. Yeah. So that's definitely plugged a hole there. Yeah. Uh, so you've got your resources on site. Yeah. But then do you tend to sort of connect with the local community as well? Yeah. Um, it's, it's something which... I think we're really aware of, like as co so we're going away into different places. I've given Bali as an example. We, we go away there for, on our trips for a couple of weeks, um, but then where we're also there to set up. And you can get stuck in a bit of a bubble, and I think that's something that's really like... Um, with, um, there's a term that's starting to come about called nomad so social responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and really it talks a lot about that, like the actual connection of like the, the foreigners with the locals um, there. So, so you actually started doing co-workation, I mean you came up with the idea mm. three years ago? Yeah, I came up with the idea three years ago, um, maybe three, three or four years ago when I discovered co-working spaces. Right. Um, you, were you working in a co-working space? No, I wasn't, no. I, I'd, I'd, I'd been location independent um, for 15 years or so and I took advantage of that when travelling quite a lot. Um, 
uh, and take my computer and, you know, go and spend a month in Mauritius or a few months in Brazil or whatever, and then go back. Barcelona was generally my sort of base, but yeah. then I would go go away, spend some time in another place and come back. Um, but also, like, I had spent a lot of time sort of travelling around more as a digital nomad, sort of from spot to spot. But what I found with that, as great as it was, like you get to see the world and you're travelling and working at the same time, it, it could be lonely um, because there wasn't, you know, in those days any community of other travellers working at the same time. Mm-hmm. You would meet other backpackers or other travellers, um, but not many people that, like, you know, I'd have to go off and get my computer out and be working sort of like during the day or whenever. Um, and you'd sort of, you, you'd, people would look at it like you're a bit of a, uh, an odd one there or workaholic, what's he doing there? On, on his computer so really you didn't have that community of like-minded people that like felt uh, inspired and were traveling around and working um, from different locations yeah so to me it seemed as soon as I discovered co-working I thought well hang on the, the natural progression of a co-working space will be co-working space on the road yeah um, and I thought well I've seen the, the, the impact it can have on one's work um, when you're actually you get to a beautiful inspiring location here you feel good and you're happy about life creativity is freed up um, you're in a you know your your normal patterns of thinking mm-hmm. have been broken a little bit um, uh, so it does open up your mind a lot more to fresh perspectives okay. um, so I sort of had seen the power of that so I thought well hang on so traveling and working is, is, is so, so great co-working spaces are so great well why not combine the two so I uh, thought well co-location I thought well, one day I believe that's going to become a thing like, yeah. and it just I thought well okay I don't, I'm not, not at the right time to start the business now yeah um, I had other businesses I was working on but one day I'm going to get to that and that is my passion I knew it right there I want to get to that like that's you know that's me right because um, you went from tourism to tourism to this and it's you know like location independence and like traveling and working like I've been doing for so long and but and, but more importantly like location independence and the freedom that location independence implies mm-hmm. I'm a really big believer in it and I want more people to uh, experience that more people to understand it's possible right um, I mean it seems very like you know you've hit the right time doing it yeah absolutely you know like this is all starting to um, you know explode like there's a lot of uh, different exciting projects sort of happening around the world related to either digital nomadism or location independence there's this whole ecosystem that's um, starting to uh, build to make life um, a whole lot better richer and easier for um, location independent professionals and digital nomads mm. um, and to encourage more people into that circle um, right. to make that break from a career where they or a job where they might be really feeling unhappy and unfulfilled mm-hmm. they can they can actually break out of that there's other alternatives there and there's people there to assist you to show you how to do it there's co- you know a lot of coaching and resources and on how you can do it yeah but then once you actually make that break there's a whole lot of exciting experiences um, going on around the world um, okay. co-location is one but there's you know dozens of them that are starting to happen sort of around where you can go okay I want to go and experience life and I want to have adventures but I want to work at the same time and so you can go off and do it and you can sort of live close closer to your passions yeah. and it is as you were saying just as important to have the balance in terms of doing the things that you are, want to do yeah as, as you know as much as kind of being able to work in and put the two together exactly and just being able to structure your life the way you want to live your life um, as opposed to someone there your boss saying look you've got to be in here between nine and five or a lot of the time eight to eight kind of thing like mm. there and really controlling your movements and okay that might mean you just sit on the screen because your brain's just fried and you know like uh, you, where's the productivity like that anyone can expect someone to do t- during this fixed time these fixed days of the week yeah so yeah so it's gonna have well. it's gonna have a big impact on the way people are working in the i believe so and look i mean through location independent professionals, like so the individuals and the entrepreneurs and the freelancers and the remote workers that are doing these things, um, but then also like on a, on a corporate level. Yeah. Um, so companies are, um, are particularly in, in countries where there's full employment or, yeah. or like, or like Australia, um, yeah. America to a lesser extent, but like where the employees have more power mm-hmm. um, to and to actually dictate the terms and especially the Y Gen, like they're demanding it, like they're they're saying, look, I'm you know, I'm nobody's uh, nobody's owning me. Yeah. You know, I want to have this. And so they're demanding freedom. They're saying, okay, 
Well, I want to have firstly a job where I feel there's a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important to them. Um, but I also want to um, I recognise that there's more to my li life than work. Yeah. Um, but I want to be passionate about my work. But I want to have a fusion. So that whole um, the paradigm of work-life balance. Yeah. Um, sort of is, is now changing. So it's not about okay, I go to work and then I have my life after work or on the weekends. You know, like, um, people don't. It's more about like the actual fusion. Work and life just become one. Exactly. Um, and so Mondays don't have that you know dreaded oh Monday morning effect. You're not no. saying I'm hanging out till Friday. You know, like, um, anymore. It's like well, I'm I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I structure my days and my week because I actually might work on it for a few hours on a Saturday or even a Sunday. Yeah. Um, but I'll have some time off during the week because there's a really good event that I want to go on to on the Wednesday night. You know what? I might have a few wines, and so I'm not going to try and force myself Thursday morning to get up in the morning and like drag myself off to the office and work at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning with a sore head because I'm not going to be very productive. Yeah. So I'm going to like dictate my timetable around what. I sort of want to do I'll still get the job done but I'll be able to do it in, a, uh, in, in my own time my own pace and be a whole lot more productive um, yeah. uh, at the same time so it brings it back to the, to the work life balance yeah It's going to have a big impact on the way people are working. I believe so. And look, I mean, through location independent professionals, like so the individuals and the entrepreneurs and the freelancers and the remote workers that are doing these things, um, but then also like on a, on a corporate level. Yeah. Um, so companies are, um, are particularly in, in countries where there's full employment or, yeah. or like, or like Australia. Um, yeah. America to a lesser extent, but like where the employees have more power mm -hmm. um, to and to actually dictate the terms, and especially the Y Gen, like they're demanding it, like they're, they're saying, "Look, I'm, you know, I'm nobody's, uh, nobody's owning me. Yeah. You know, I want to have this, and so they're demanding freedom. They're saying, "Okay, well, I want to have firstly a job where I feel there's a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important to them, um, but I also want to, um, I recognise that there's more to my li life than work." Yeah. Um, um, but I want to be passionate about my work, but I want to have a fusion. So that whole um, the paradigm of work-life balance yeah. um, sort of is, is now changing. So it's not about, okay, I go to work and then I have my life after work or on the weekends. You know, like, um, people don't, it's more about like the actual fusion. Work and life just become one. Exactly. Um, and so Mondays 
don't have that, you know, dreaded oh Monday morning effect. You're not no. saying I'm hanging out till Friday, you know, like, um, anymore. It's like, well, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I structure my days and my week because I actually might work on it for a few hours on a Saturday or even a Sunday. Yeah. Um, but I'll have some time off during the week because there's a really good event that I want to go on to on the Wednesday night. You know what? I might have a few wines. And so I'm not going to try and force myself Thursday morning to get up in the morning and, like, drag myself off to the office and work at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning with a sore head because I'm not going to be very productive. Yeah. So I'm going to, like, dictate my timetable around what I sort of want to do. I'll still get the job done, but I'll be able to do it in, a, in, in my own time, my own pace, and be a whole lot more productive um, yeah. uh, at the same time. So it brings it back to the to the work life balance, basically. Yeah. And you know, you work, you you know, we're here on site now, and uh, we've done the two days, which yeah. has been fantastic. And yeah, actually, the type of people that have come on this um, co-workation yeah. are the kind of people that you expect to sort of come and be part of this. Yeah, I think so. There's been a, there's a, quite a cross section. Um, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. you know somebody here who's you know works in the corporate world. And yeah, the corporate SKP types. Um, you know, and then you've got your entrepreneur um, here. Then there's, there's you know sort of like some freelance journalists um, yeah. as well. Like, so there's a bit of a, a and cross section. It, and independent workers, but in the future you want to do, as you said, sort of corporate off-sites and... Yeah, I, th I think because it's 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 a it's a philosophy and a way of living your life as opposed to so this what uh, the co-location product at the moment we might be marketing more to location independent professionals or like the managers like there but that it's more about like a whole reflection of a way of life of how to get the most out of yourself your team your employees whatever it might be mm -hmm. so taking so, them out of the office exactly you know those so, um, a company want expects uh, creativity from their from their from their team they pick a hand uh, a crack team to come up with some sort of innovative design of a product or whatever and they get them to do it in the same environment so Bob Sarah Jane and Joe they've gone home and they've woken up in the morning they've brushed their teeth been stuck in traffic peak hour traffic get in there going to the office say hello to their mate that's uh, they, oh geez I haven't sent you that email yet oh no I'll get round to you whatever and then they go into the boardroom or the meeting room All right guys let's get creative <laughs> You know, like, is that the best environment for it? Mm -hmm. No. Well, why don't you break them out of it? So they come in beautiful location, mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, like, they've broken their patterns, yeah. um, patterns of thought, and they can really transcend boundaries. Like, they can, you know, their mind is freed up to like, think a little bit more openly. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the same time, what a company is actually doing, like, they're, it's like actually it's a project that they're working on, but then they're also ticking the boxes of team building and incentives. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, which they spend thousands and whatever, like depending on the company, like they allocate budgets for a team building weekend or an incentive trip. Mm -hmm. um, this they can say, well, let's get some work done, project management. At the same time, while they're out here, there's going to be a lot of team building happening naturally, yeah. and there's a lot of incentive going on anyway. Yeah. So when they're posting their stuff on social media and they, their mates are back in the office going, wow, wait, I want to go join that trip. Like, I want to do that. Like, okay, that's for a reward for like the crack team, like the. Um, to be done, I'm going to aspire to be able to go out and, and, and enjoy those experiences okay. as well. And also for startups to, uh, you know, come out here and uh, create ideas. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and then sort of like in that, you know, whether you're free from sort of like distractions of the of the of day to day life. Um, and one of the benefits of working sort of like remotely or like you know f uh, off site from where uh, where your company is, mm -hmm. you don't get absorbed in all the little details, mm -hmm. um, and which can sometimes take up a disproportionate amount of your time that you really should be spending. You forget about the really important stuff. Um, and so, like, by taking yourself out of that, you're like, okay, hang on, what's really important? And you narrow it down. So you say, okay, this and this and this, this is really important. And all the other stuff is falls by the wayside. Yeah. So also, I mean, you know, you're doing this one and then you've got two more coming up in, yeah. well, in August. Yeah, so we've got, um, end of August, we've got one Barcelona city and country, so a few nights in Barcelona city um, um, environment and then a few nights out in the country environment. Uh, Great. And uh, then, you know, like, there's some really exciting sort of like things I would like to... You know, set up a, um, a permanent co-location sort of like hub Great. in a really sort of inspirational environment. At the moment we're in the Barcelona city centre um, but like having a hub like here yeah. 
yeah. that people we were working from, but people can come and go. And then there's sort of like some formal sort of like co-working or organised um, co-working retreats. Great. But then also it's like a, just a co-working, co-living kind of place that people can come and come and go from. They need a few days break from the city to, uh, the, for a bit of inspiration, where they can do it. Great, and not too far from the city. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Well, great, Stuart. Well, uh, there's a lot going on, a lot <laughs> happening, and I'm looking forward to uh, experiencing, you know, one of the the other ones and uh, yeah. telling people about it. Yeah, right. I, think, I think it's a great idea. Thank you very much, Katrina. All yeah, right, yeah, and thanks. thanks for joining us on the grid. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> All right. All right. Good. Sergi from Cloud Coworking has been a part of it. Sergi, how was your experience of uh, you know being off site? And being in a in a you know uh, independent space or location, it was a very very intense and unique experience for me. First time, indeed. I like the idea of just getting out of the office of my my usual environment and getting to know new people and doing some workshops. And of course, especially the environment helped a lot, helped yeah. a lot. Yeah, it was held in a mon monastery. So it was a nice swimming pool, nice views, nice just environment, fresh air, and so um, how do you feel, see it's beneficial for independent workers or co-workers? Well, it is just I think the the reality is that the the name of the, of the project co-workation, so co-working and inspiration, that's what it is, right? So mm -hmm. we were here just for for two days. It was a short period, but. I feel like my mind is totally renewed, I'm inspired, I'm like ready to go again to the big city and keep working hard. Great. And like... So you will recommend it to uh, other co-workers? And absolutely, I, I have actually already recommended to some of our co-workers Great. for their next trip. They're doing, they're doing a boat trip in September, September in yeah. Sicily yeah. and that's going to be really good and price is reasonable. So. so will you do it again? Yes, indeed. And uh, you will uh, take Cloud work co-working on, on location? I will see. I will have to see about that. It's definitely a complex question to, to answer. But why not? I mean, mm, it's a good, it's, it good would place. be a good project, right? To do like a co work, cloud co working on the road or something. On location. Like that. Yeah, on location. And uh, come, you know, brainstorming new ideas for your next ventures, perhaps. Yes. Yeah? It would be, yeah, it, it helped me yeah. just talking with other entrepreneurs and connecting with other conning, people. Connecting with other people that weren't exactly doing the same. So nobody was actually running a co working space, but they were doing like web management or design or different projects. Yeah. So but it's the same, you know, bringing people together from a different environment mm -hmm. creates lots of different synergies, synergies yes. and energy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all together, a positive experience. Indeed. A okay. very positive experience and will repeat very, very soon. Great, Sergi. Well, it's good to uh, see you again. Thank you very much. And uh, look forward to, uh, you know, interviewing you... you next time. Uh, see, seeing you next time and interviewing you about perhaps your next project. Thank you very much. I dream, I dream of you and the flowers For a couple of hours such a beautiful day Daydream I fell asleep under the flowers